Good afternoon folks, I'm Dan. Little Builder Basics today, and I've kind of decided my Builder Basics are the things that kind of strike me at the moment and I think may be relevant to everybody's builds. Um, part of it is things that are also happening on some of the internet discussions and everything. So there's a couple of things I'm going to cover today. One is when is it time to walk away from your project? And I don't mean permanently, but when do you need to take a break for a day or if you planned on working on your airplane one particular day, maybe you shouldn't be working on that day for whatever reason, whether it's motivation, whether it's other things going on, whether things just aren't going right for you. Um, this is Sunday. Friday I started in, Friday afternoon, I had a couple little projects I was going to do and, and I wanted to shoot some videos of those. One of them was my little casting pot that I'm rebuilding and, and the other one was my little Atlas 10 inch lathe uh, that I'm turning into a production lathe uh, and I'll put links to those up someplace in the, in the uh, cards up above so but anyway those were my plans to work on on Friday afternoon I had some free time set aside for that and I started working on my little casting pot and shooting a little video on what should have been a, a five minute project to bolt those parts together after I blued them um, turned into a half an hour ordeal and nothing went right on it. Um, it it wasn't a big deal but nothing happened right and I think that kind of set the stage for the next one so I went to reassembling the tailstock on the little Atlas lathe and Nothing wanted to fit, nothing wanted to line up, screws didn't want to start, it was just, it was, finally I said I'm not working on this, and I'm, I still haven't touched either of them since then, I've set them aside. The plan was Saturday I was going to spend all day working on the airplane, and by Friday night I thought, I'm not doing that, and if I've got a day that I don't feel like I've accomplished anything, or a, a day on the weekend, or something like that, why I feel I've wasted one of those days that I have left in life. So it bothers me not to accomplish something if I'm, you know, I can't see spending all my time just sitting in front of the TV and, you know, watching football or whatever the case may be. I don't like that. Um, so I'd already decided by Friday night I wasn't working on the airplane, and I'm already starting to think about what I'm going to do this weekend to salvage it so it's not a, a wasted weekend or a wasted Saturday anyway. So I thought I might work on the... Um, start doing a layout for a fifth bearing for the Corvair engine and I really contemplated that and decided that wasn't really a project I wanted to work on and what I ended up Saturday morning is I got around and I had built the uh, engine stands to, to bolt the Corvair to an engine stand and I showed a I think I probably showed pictures of a rusted out old engine stand that I built years and years ago that sat out in the weather and I had to clean that up and paint it. It was all rusted over and everything, needed new wheels on it. So I got around, I cut four plates Saturday morning for the wheels to mount on, and I went ahead and welded them in place and ground off all the rust and, and got it ready to go. This afternoon I got around and threw a coat of paint on those. So I probably won't touch that again. I'll tuck it away someplace and I won't do anything else with it until I actually need that engine stand. But at least it's not going to get rusty again after I've cleaned it up and, and I've made forward progress. So the the moral of that story as a plans builder is that there's always something else you can do. If things aren't going the way they should, rather than just go in and drink your beer until you're stupid for the rest of the evening, why you can um, you can always find something else to do. I try and always find another project to be working on so at least I've accomplished something else to make the, the main project work forward. And the engine stand's one of those things that had to be done too. It's just that now that's pretty well out of the way and when I get ready to use it, why it'll be ready to go into service. So that little rambling's pretty well over with. So anyway, the other thing is there's a discussion going on about attaching your weather strip to your to your windshield. Um, and I've seen this discussion before pop up. This is on the Zenith list. And on the things, I try and only offer an opinion if I think I've got some experience and maybe something to offer to that. My background is when I started out, when I started out my working life, I wasn't quite 16 when I had my first real, real job, and that was working at a trucking company. Um, my uncle was head paint and body man. I went to work with him before I had a driver's license even, and I worked in that, oh, I worked in that shop for probably five years and uh, learned to paint, learned to run heavy equipment, learned to drive truck, all that good stuff that goes along with it. And um, from there I went out, opened my own shop, contracted back to them. And then um, my last my last projects, uh, vehicle painting, was uh, 
couple of train engines and some passenger coaches for for a uh, railroad. From there, I went on and, and learned to be a gunsmith. I've I've worked as a gunsmith for almost 30 years now. Um, just recently closed my shop to the public for a few different reasons, but nonetheless, that's my background. So you can decide for yourself if I know anything when I say something. If I don't, that's okay. I, I'm not going to stand and get into a an argument on the internet with somebody over something that doesn't matter to me. You know, I don't care. Adhesives to put your weather stripping on your airplane to, to adhere it to your windshield. Yeah. Zenith recommends Super Weather Strip Adhesive. That's an adhesive that's been around for years. It's always worked well. If I take Super Weather Strip Adhesive and try and glue my weather stripping on and it doesn't work, a good chance it's my fault and not the products. Um, usually when you've got a product that is recommended by the manufacturer, which in this case would be Zenith, Zenith has been around a long time. They know quite a bit more than I do. So if they recommend something, I'm going to use that product if I can source it. If I can't, then I'm going to look for alternatives. Is it the only product? No. There's probably alternatives out there that will work just as well or possibly better. But when the manufacturer recommends something, usually there's a reason they recommend it, and it's usually because it works. If it doesn't work for me, it's because I've done something wrong. And with the case of um, paint and automotive products as far as um, things auto body type stuff, whether it be paint, whether it be, in this case, weather strip adhesive, it's usually either a uh, problem with the product due to being outdated or aged, or else it's your surface preparation. And usually it comes down to one of those two things. Um, if you've got old weather strip adhesive, yeah, it's probably not going to work as well. And that's one of the things we discussed on the forum the other night. Um, in my experience, in normal temperatures, it's a little chilly out here today, but in normal temperatures, that super weather strip adhesive will almost run out of the tube. Um, you don't really have to squeeze the tube at all. If you flip it upside down and give it just a little bit white, it's going to run out there and, and look fairly liquid, I guess, is the best way I can describe it. If it's a little bit gummy and you try and spread it on your whatever the case may be, even just on a flat surface, if it kind of wants to ball together and not spread out real smooth, usually it's old. You know, either you're way outside the temperature range or else it's old old material. Um, and if it's not sticking to things like weather stripping, which it's designed to do, usually it's it's surface preparation. You've got a, you've got a problem with surface preparation. Um, weather stripping, the way I understand it is usually formed in a mold or it used to be formed in a mold and in some way and it had some sort of a release agent and that's going to stop it from adhering. You've got to clean that release agent off. Um, I don't believe acetone will cut it. I don't think that is the proper material to be cleaning. I think as I remember and I'm, I'm going from memory here, I think lacquer thinner will take that release agent off and prepare your material a little bit better for to adhere to that weather strip. Acetone will eat almost anything off but there's some things that won't you know people are going to agree with me people are going to disagree with me that's entirely up to you i'm giving you my opinion as to what works and i think i have something to add to the conversation if you decide i don't that's fine you know don't don't worry about it i'm not upset because you don't like what i say so anyway if you find these videos helpful go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you hit the bell notification you'll know when i put out a new video and if you've got comments complaints gripes whatever they may be leave them in the comments section below i look forward to hearing them Thanks for taking the time to watch.